Well, hey guys, welcome to Hope Rescue Podcast. This is Kimberly and Tim Scott. And I was just discussing with our producer that I am super stoked that we are in September because we can officially start burning the pumpkin spice candles and all well, we, the fall vibe yeah, is happening. It's still hot though. Yeah, but it's, I know, it literally is like 90 something outside right now. Yeah. But I have a candle burning that smells like fall. And, it does. And my heart is happy. It's just happy because I feel like it's my favorite season of the year. Is it your favorite, Mm. Sophie? Yeah, there's something very sentimental about it for all of us. And so I'm I'm pretty happy about it. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Babe, come on. Don't you have the feels like the the fog was covering the the streets this morning? I like fall. It just it's okay. What's your favorite season of the year? Fall. (laughs) I'm boring. I'm gonna say, let's see fall oh yeah. you actually like it a lot when it's rainy yeah i like the rain i like yeah. i like i we don't have much in in san diego in terms of weather you know it's pretty much the same all year long yeah. it's a little colder yeah. in the winter and a little warmer in the summer you think the way but, we react to any slight change though yeah. that it's dramatic yeah <laughs> because san diegans especially online they're a bunch of whiners when there's any sort of shift within like five degrees yeah, yeah. i like i like it um colder than hot if it's going to be extreme hot yeah i'd rather be extreme cold so. yeah yeah i'm with and, you and i mean san diego extreme and keep cold. your humidity yeah, you know, I, I don't mind it hot, too hot, but but you can keep the humidity. I don't want. Yeah, yeah. well, we're going to talk about ethics, and that's a good not segue. about the fall. <laughs> yeah, we're going to talk about ethics. Uh, we started with a couple of uh, issues, ethical issues, uh, but there's a verse that I really think is powerful, and it's um, one of the most important verses, I think, as it relates to ethics, because it presents three. And let me read it to you. Micah 6, 8 says this, he has told you, old man, what is good and what does the re- Lord require of you? So what is God requiring of us? But to do justice to love kindness, and to walk humbly with your God. Three things. Do, uh, love, and and walk. And, and these are attached to three ethical issues that I really want us to take our time going through this mm. and then um, kind of break this down each week. Yeah. Uh, let's just take the first if one. If there let's take- ever was a time, this is it in 2020 for this scripture. Yeah. I feel like... If we could keep this as our focus, it will help lead and guide us through what seems to be yeah. one blow after another yeah. to, to heal and mend relationships all around us. So, so good. So especially this issue of justice, there's a lot of different views and I'm not going to get into the, uh, like the controversy of that. What is social justice versus biblical justice? Are they the same? Are they different? Uh, I may get into that in a little bit. Uh, down the road, but uh, for right now, just this word justice, um, it, it, here's a definition I got from several different sources. The definition that stands out the most often is the equal treatment of all people, irrespective of race, economics, or religion. Mm-hmm. And so, and, and other factors are involved in that as, as well. But think about the equal treatment and there's, there's different kind different categories of justice. You've got legal justice. So mm-hmm. there's uh, you know, equity under the law, right. there's economic justice and so forth. Mm-hmm. So there's different kinds, but just speaking to this on a, on a really uh, basic uh, level of justice, mm-hmm. there's two things um, that, that really need to be emphasized about justice. Yeah. So justice involves the first is penalties for transgressions. And the second is giving benefits to those who lack. So So it's, so basically you, you pay, you play, you play, you pay. (laughs) So if you, (laughs) if you're going to, if, if you steal, yes, uh, according to biblical justice, if you steal Mm -hmm. something, not only do you have to give that back, Mm -hmm. And make restoration, uh, make restitution, mm-hmm. but you have to also even increase the amount that you give back mm-hmm. because other harm has been done other than just, right. you know, that person lost. Yeah. yeah, it's it's human suffering and so forth. Mm-hmm. So the Bible says that there's a, a responsible mm-hmm. uh, a, a 
r- restoring yeah. mm-hmm. of that person, making that person whole. Yeah. And so, but then the other one is we rarely talk about, mm-hmm. we, we, we kind of know about the penalty side, but you had mentioned the second side and that's giving benefits. benefits to those and lack. there's uh-huh. a scripture that we uh, got here that I think would really be helpful for people to understand this. Yeah, the scripture is out of Deuteronomy ten eighteen, and it says, he executes justice for the fatherless and the widow and loves the sojourner. That's the correct way to say that, right? Sojourner. Sojourner, giving him food and clothing. So you think about justice. Most of us think about justice as mm-hmm. he deserved what he got. You know, he got yeah. that punishment. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, he committed that crime. He got, had to do the time. Um, by the way, I'm, I'm going to sidetrack here just about our ju- judicial system. We have a lot of people who are in jail yeah. that should not be in jail or in prison because of the nature of their crime, they should have actually been uh, made to restore mm-hmm. what they stole or you know the harm that they did. Now, violent criminals That's need to be removed right. from society mm-hmm. for the safety of society. Uh, but uh, when when you're talking about you know theft or you're talking about uh, especially first person protection crimes mm-hmm. like drug abuse, mm-hmm. yeah, you know you get caught with. Uh, you know, uh, uh, yeah, a, a usable a amount. Substance. Yeah, but you're not, you know, you're not, you're not selling heroin or something. I think there is a level of violence involved sure. in that. Yeah. But just using that, uh, I, I really struggle with mm-hmm. our judicial system having all of that. And I think there is some reform that's that happening could be in our its country. Own episode right yeah. there. Yeah, it really could. But that's a very. Uh, you could go deep on that, and there's a lot of different opinions. But just think about somebody that's in jail for having stole mm-hmm. a car. And so they, they go into somebody's driveway, they steal that car. What they should have done is been forced to, to get the car back to them and or make them whole in whatever Buy them way. a new car. Yeah. Didn't they do it that way in the Bible days? You yeah, had to, like, you absolutely. became an indentured servant, right? To it's pay exactly off debts. right. Yeah. yeah. Um, that gets into a whole issue yeah, of a, the ethics of slavery. <laughs> no, that's another but, episode uh, too. Indentured slaves. And the point, though, is that you have yeah. to pay back what you took. And yeah. it, it, obviously, we don't, you yeah. know, support the the idea of slavery. But but that you have personal responsibility to not just do time somewhere, but to actually restore back to the yeah. person that you took it, from. It does very little to make that person whole. Yeah by putting someone in prison. Yeah. Now, if you've committed a, a, a violent crime, mm-hmm. um, say rape or murder or, you know, those are completely different. Yes. So there, there are different levels of justice. But when we think about justice, we always think in terms of, you know, retribution or, mm-hmm. you know, punishment. But I love what this verse says. He exec- This is God yeah. executing justice, as you read, for the far fatherless and widows, you think, wait a minute, why do they need justice? Yeah. Well, of course they need justice because they need to be made whole. Mm-hmm. And he says, and he, he loves this owner, giving him food and clothing. So justice is involved in presenting a gift mm-hmm. and it's, and it's taking care of the needy. Speaking specifically to families, they're at risk. That, uh, absolutely. Is, is a, it's something I, you wouldn't think of as being, well, this is the just thing to do. You think it's the right thing to do, but it yeah. is a matter of justice. I don't know if we've dealt with this on our, our podcast, but definitely I preached on this recently um, because we were going through James. So I think it was in a message I gave in James chapter one, verse, I think it's 26 and 27. It talks about um, that true good religion is ministering to orphans and widows, Mm -hmm. visiting them. It literally means to inspect their situation Mm -hmm. and respond to that. So when we think of justice, that's a justice issue. Right. So now we can talk about whose responsibility that is, whether it's the individual, the church, or the state. And that gets into the political aspect. So just focusing on what our individual responsibility responsibility and if you're involved in a church, it, it might be really helpful mm-hmm. to to be in, uh, involved in a church where they actually do that kind of outreach. Um, you know, the um, the ministry of Hope Rescue, kind of what is our, 
Can you share with them? Well, kind of yeah, our... I think a lot of people who watch this uh, podcast or listen don't even necessarily know about this because we don't talk about it. But this specific podcast supports um, feeding ha- uh, families at risk through our outreach. It's called Hope Rescue Outreach, and we actually have a food truck and a distribution distribution uh, program that yeah. um, gets involved in serving, gets behind churches that are already doing it, or we'll go out and do it on our own, but serving um, and feeding families at risk. And especially during these past six, seven months with COVID, there's been, obviously, every city has suffered on another level right. for um, being able to help those folks. So, um, yeah, we, it's been really cool. And so this is very real to us. This is real to me because, um, some of you may not know before I met Tim, we've been married almost 15 years, but I was a single mom on welfare with my five children. And, uh, so I was on the system and, and used every part of the system I could to survive until I was able to get a job, um, for, to be able to support my family on my own. But even then, I had some support because of how, how low our income was. So I was that girl. I was that widow. <laughs> Not necessarily a widow. I was a divorcee. But we were in a situation where we weren't being cared for. And the state and uh, program programming there uh, was what I leaned on it. And yeah. I was so grateful for. And yet the church is called to do that. And I will tell you, it was the church that came to my rescue. Yeah, they, they, yes. they bought you... Uh, dishwashers they yes. got you food they yeah. got you yeah it was incredible so it, this it's a very real precious close to our hearts kind of yeah. situation with hope rescue um outreach let me let me give you um kind of our philosophy about that for those of you that may be interested in this hope rescue uh of course we have the podcast and and we have some other things that we do but when it relates to dealing with at-risk families and that's our greatest target is at-risk families we think of not only just providing sometimes you know people that are involved in ministry to the poor or the um, underfunded we'll say yeah um, you know is just provide Mm -hmm. but we believe it is not just provision of clothing and toiletries and food and encouragement but it's also to build them so our our theme is provide build and train Mm -hmm. so we we want to build those individuals on um, how they can budget properly, how they can raise their kids properly, how they can get off of substance abuse, if that's a, mm-hmm. an issue, how they can get soft skill training. And uh, COVID has put us behind the, the eight ball on all that. But uh, we are very excited yeah. to get the that training going for uh, those people to build them up. And then the final part uh, is the train, and that is training um, the church of how to do this yeah. most effectively. So it's provide, build, and train. And and Hope Rescue has a sense that people have potential. If we can get behind them, there are many people that don't want to uh, move forward, but there are those oh, that yeah. want to move forward, and we want to help them move forward. Yeah. And uh, I never thought of that as, as justice. As, as justice. Yeah. Now, yeah. when we talk about social justice, I'll just mention there is... Uh, a, a, a kind of a, a, a colliding there of economic justice. And so uh, there are those that believe in redistribution of wealth and so forth. And that, that kind of confuses the issue of justice. He's not talking about redistribution of wealth. What he's talking about is meeting the actual mm-hmm. physical needs mm-hmm. of those who are are hungry and those those are without food and those are without clothing mm-hmm. and it's all throughout scripture god's yeah. heart for uh yes. those that are hurting like and that. i think some people may feel overwhelmed like that like especially you turn on your tv and, and and during these these times too we've seen that the like i said the need is so great but really what this comes down to is individually 
you know, reaching out to your neighbor. I mean, yeah. it doesn't have to be on a larger scale like we do with our outreach or some of these major outreaches. It really begins with you and the people you know and seeing, is there a need and how can I meet it? You know, yeah. that's justice. So you, it, it shouldn't yeah. be something that's overwhelming. By the way, I'll just mention this. If you are interested in helping with uh, food distribution, let us know. Contact yeah. us and let us know that you would like to do it. Yes. We'd love to plug you in. Love the volunteers. Um, another thing is, is this conflict that some people have between fairness and justice. Yeah. So when we think about fairness, at least for our definitions mm -hmm. here, and the, there's some dispute about this, justice uh, is, is different in terms of fairness. Fairness is about outcome. Mm -hmm. So when, when we want to, when we think of fairness, we go, everybody should have the same level of income. Um, that would be most fair. It'd be really fair if everybody was the same height and, <laughs> and, and the same attractiveness and the same, uh, you know, resources. Uh, that's just not reality. No. And, and uh, that's just not going to happen. So I don't think that's the goal. Justice, the goal is to impartially mm -hmm. love people well mm -hmm. and, and to show that treatment of impartiality. And when we talk about, when you go into a court of law, you don't, you don't necessarily need fairness. What you need is justice. Mm -hmm. You need someone that will give you a fear of, uh, a fair hearing, mm -hmm. not only on what you did, but the mitigating circumstances or aggravating circumstances around that behavior. Uh, in the court of law, you really want that. There's a couple of other verses that I think are really powerful, uh, Leviticus 19, 15. Let me read that and then you can read the okay. other one. Uh, you shall uh, do no injustice in court. You shall not be partial to the poor or defer to the great, uh, but in righteousness you, you shall judge your neighbor. And so he, he's saying it's not just about judging uh, the poor, being just to the poor, but it's about being just to the poor and to the great. And not to defer to the great. Right, so, right. Which exactly. is a human tendency, right. you know. Exactly. That's so good. De Deuteronomy one seventeen says this. You shall not be partial in judgment. You shall hear the small and the great alike. You shall not be intimidated by anyone, for the judgment is God's. So again, it's, it's saying basically, you know, using that impartiality with the small and great alike. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, what we want to do is just spend the next few moments, I don't know how far we'll get through this, but we wrote down several things that we thought might be helpful, how to do justice to marginalized people. So if justice is not just giving, uh, you know, retribution for bad behavior, but justice is, as God says, his justice drives him to meet the needs of the poor. Yeah. Then how do we do that? So we're just, we have several things that we've listed here and we'll just kind of go through these go through and talk quickly. about them. Okay. Yeah. I'll do the first one and the third and you jump yeah, in. Okay. okay. Christians should have understood the, understand the complexity of discrimination that marginalizes people's experience. Marginalized people experience. So think about how people who have been marginalized. So they are people that have been uh, kind of set aside mm -hmm. because of possibly race, yep. because of economic status, because of gender, mm -hmm. and even because of their sexuality, mm -hmm. or uh, whether it's choices or whether it's um, you know the way they were born. Mm -hmm. Uh, in any of those, Christians need to understand the complexity yes. of this discrimination. Discrimination is real. Absolutely, yeah. And and uh, Christians should be wise and informed on the complexity of that discrimination. This takes listening. Now, I'm not a great listener. I'll be honest with you. You always say that, but... Um, but but you have to be because you keep saying it. <laughs> yeah. Well, you I don't know listening. about that, but, but uh, that's, I, I, that's I, I, the key, though. That really is the key. Is yeah. you, and I think you're a better listener than you give yourself credit for. Well, as a, as you know, I'm I'm great at researching. Uh, I listen to people's stories and so forth, and I I do hear those. But there are better listeners than me. Uh, the point being simply at something we all need yeah. to really work yeah. on is to hear the story and hear the emotion yes. that that person is feeling behind that story. Mm -hmm. What is it that is 
um, you know, created this void in this person's heart. Mm -hmm. Now, sometimes, you know, like I, I would listen to my kids, you know, and, you know, they would come home with a story and you realize, you know what, maybe you're not seeing that right. Maybe you need a little correction yeah. uh, and maybe get a little bit of wisdom mm -hmm. thrown in alongside of that. But hear the story and ask questions yeah, I think about the, the journey. Important. Yeah, it's just a, there's a good way to put that, and that's to hold space for someone. Yeah. That's a term we've talked about. In When you're listening to someone's story, really listening means holding space for them to be able to share. And I think you're right. Asking questions is key. And here's the next one. Christians should constantly see people as image bearers. Now, that's so good because that speaks to identity. So tell them what image bearers means. Yeah, that we, and according to the word of God, we are all image bearers of Christ. So we carry his identity regardless of all those things, those barriers, those areas that seem unjust in your life, uh, whether it is your color, your background, your education, all those things that make you feel less than, the, the playing field is evened when you see yourself and others through the lens of being an image bearer of Christ. And so that, like I said, it, it evens the playing field for everybody and it's well, so uh, valuable. When, when we talk about our core value as a person, that is our core value. We were all created things are for the glory of God, but only humans were created in the image of yeah, God. Yeah. That is such an honor yeah, to us. Yeah, so good. Yeah. And it's what God chose to do mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, for us. I'm going to cough, so you read this one. Okay, Christians need to be peacemakers and defend the sacredness of humanity. We need a voice that will at the same time stand for the oppressed and call the church to unity. Which so, is so important, especially yeah. now. <laughs> yeah. So Christians need these peacemakers. They're always, they're always like, you are naturally a peacemaker. You're a nine. Yes, Isn't that a peacemaker? On the Enneagram. Yes. Enneagram we like nine. peace. We try to keep yeah. the calm. And, I'm yeah. an eight. So yeah, you, I like stirring like it up a little bit. like flipping the tables. <laughs> yeah. That's so, why we married each other. Yeah. So <laughs> I like, flip the table. That's yeah. cool. He flips tables yeah. and you're like, oh, she makes me feel a little more calm about myself. <laughs> Is that how our marriage is? I'm in is love. Working? Let's get married. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder why we were attracted to each other. Uh, more uh, common than you know. <laughs> yeah. The, it, when, when you think about uh, peacemakers, peacemakers can see past things that have marginalized others. Yeah. So, you know, if, you know, I love it when people have no guile. Mm -hmm. um, some of, I've, I've seen a few people in my life that have absolutely no guile. Um, you know, most people have real strong opinions about things, yeah. whether they express them or not. I, I say I'm not more opinionated than others. I'm just more outspoken about <laughs> it. <laughs> but uh, the reality is that peacemakers are necessary in the church, if we want to have unity, mm -hmm. we need to stand together. Mm -hmm. So let me read the next one. Christians should be hospitable to marginalized people. And we're going to talk about this more next week because this is so important. If you want to do justice, you will need to know and love others. So that takes proximity. Mm -hmm. Let me ask you this question. How have you reached out to people in your world, and I don't mean your immediately your immediate friends, but in the world that you're in, how have you reached out to people that are marginalized, people that are different? How have you shown uh, shown justice? This is a Christian ethic that's so important for us to make sure that we are looking at people through the lens of God's viewpoint. Yeah, that's how good. does He see them? Yeah. So. Absolutely. And the last one is Christians should try to balance people's stories with divine truth. And that's an interesting thought because um, it's important, uh, regardless of your story, to use God's word to help you, uh, you know, to ground us through, through trauma and all of the things. Yeah. Because it's very easy to stay stuck in the things that marginalize. Like a victimhood. Yes, a, a victimization. And so there's something beautiful about the reflection of God's word on our lives, like a mirror that helps to ground us. And again, to see ourselves uh, through his perspective as an image bearer, and also to recognize that yes, bad things have happened, but um, 
there's another side to this and there's a lot of things that, that yeah. are that can be learned and there's so many uh, blessings and benefits that come from from this journey so um, yeah I, I would see it like this too I would see where let's say somebody has grown up in a generational um, poverty and that gener generational poverty has created a dependency upon the government mm -hmm or whatever, uh, whoever would take care of them. Uh, and so there's been this kind of a paternalism. They're looking for that father mm -hmm. that's going to meet that need, uh, whether it's the state or the church or w whatever. And so somebody tells you their story. You say, you know, I've tried to get a job and I can't get a job. And, you know, I had this job and I lost it and so forth. And some people sometimes need to be taken in and reshaped in terms of reshaping their attitude. Mm -hmm. And when we talk about looking at people's stories through biblical truth, it may be that we need to challenge people to grow. Mm -hmm. And instead of just saying, hey, you know, you're stuck. We understand you're stuck, but I can tell you this. Uh, it, it's fine to be there. You don't need to grow. You don't need to change. So um, it, it's very important for us to under, challenge people to become better than they were. We need to build people up. So uh, Kimberly's having a, an attack over here. We, we both have this co yeah, it's not COVID. Tell everybody it's not COVID. If it's not, if it's not, that's a good thing, I guess. Uh, but anyway, we wanted to share with you about justice. So justice, think about justice and your ethical responsibility includes not only uh, giving uh, uh, fair treatment to people who have failed and made mistakes and sinned, but also to meet the needs of those who have been marginalized and hurt in society. So what, thank you for listening to Hope Rescue Podcast. Next week, we're going to go to the next uh, part of this verse and share it with you. And I think by then, Kimberly will be much <laughs> better shape. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, God bless you. Have a great week. Bye-bye.